Hello YouTube, so last Saturday I went to Sydney Film Festival and one of the films that I saw was a documentary called Which Way Is The Front Line From Here? on the life of Tim Hetherington who was a war photographer from 1999 till 2011 when he died in an explosion in Libya. The film was very thought provoking for me and it made me question how I myself see war and how the Western world and non-combatants in war see and perceive war and the participants in it. The film mainly concentrated on interviews with friends and family of Tim's footage that he shot, interviews with Tim himself, and many of his pictures from his earliest work right up until the time of his death. Tim originally started with pictures of the effects of war, mainly at schools for the blind, where kids who are being blinded by soldiers or mortars or the fighting were taught, and Tim took a lot of photos there and showed the effects of war. And these photos were very confronting and did show the effects of war in a very blunt way that obviously made you question why are we doing this. But Tim wasn't only concerned in seeing the effects of war, he wanted to go to the front lines and photograph there. But what made Tim's photos different from all the other war photographers and all the other war photos that we have of the brutality of war from the dead participants to people shooting at each other is that Tim took photos of the soldiers, mainly the rebels in Libya, when they weren't fighting. He took photos of the men, the children, the women, when they were just going around their everyday lives preparing for battle. And the way that Tim photographed these pictures is that he did it in a portrait style with a very specific camera. And all the photos are square, portrait style, and because of this format that Tim used, you're immediately drawn to the eyes of the person in the photograph. And in every single photo which has a person in it, you're always drawn to the eyes because of the way that it was photographed. And Tim did this intentionally because the eyes contain the humanity. And when you see these people who may be on the other side, who we may see as our enemies, when you see them looking at you as humans, not fighting, not shooting, but having the wider range of emotions that we all have, you can't help but see them as human. And that's one of the biggest effects that Tim had, going to the front lines where there was combat, but not only photographing the brutality of war, but also photographing the humanity of it. And it was these photos that made me question, are there any enemies in war? Is there a strict balance between good and bad, black and white? And of course there isn't. Tim further highlighted this, whereas in the middle to the late end of his career, he was attached to an American platoon which was in Afghanistan. And he spent about six months with that platoon, just photographing them and doing journal reports from there. And this was very different to things that he had done before in Libya and with the rebels, since these were Americans and many of the photos would be seen by people who would know these soldiers. And for all the titles that Tim could have chosen for the series of photos that he took of these soldiers, he chose the title Man Eden. And it was a very interesting title that was explained within the film that Tim didn't see this group of men as being in war. Because most of the time they weren't fighting. They were waiting around for something to happen. And in the film, Tim and his partner who were photographing these soldiers for the six months explain what they mean by that. They mean that this place, even though it's a war zone, this platoon was the only place where men could show unconditional love for one another. Not romantic love, but friendship. Unconditional, unadulterated love for each other. Caring for each other, building a community. And even though it was happening in war, and even though it was a terrible place, Tim chose to call this series of photographs Man Eden, because that's what he saw it was. In society, it's usually frowned upon for men to show that kind of affection. But when they're alone, out in an outpost, in a platoon alone, that's the affection that they do show for one another. And what was highlighted in the film was that it wasn't that these people hated the people they were fighting against. It was that they loved one another. They weren't killing or defending their troops out of a sense of hate or even a sense of duty. They were doing it because if they didn't, one of their own, one of their brothers, one of the soldiers that they loved could die. And Tim highlighted this both in his pictures in Libya and his pictures in America, that these people are not different, that they're the same, and they're fighting for ultimately the same reasons, and it's just the governments and the political powers that are using them against each other. Through his photos, Tim highlighted that war contains so many more emotions than hate that the governments and the political powers use these emotions for their own advantages. 
As you think on that, I want to bring out three main points that I got from the film that impacted me. The first point was what the people felt after Tim's death. One of the most emotional lines from the film was when the hospital called up one of Tim's partners and explained that Tim had died. And then he said, I don't want to come across as callous, but before you have never understood war because you have never lost someone close to you. Now that you've lost someone close to you, now you understand war. And what's brought out in the film that when you're fighting, you're not afraid for your own life. You're afraid for the lives of others and the emotions that you'll feel once they're gone. I think that's a more important thing to remember about war and the hate that we usually associate it with it. The second thing that I want to bring out is that during the time he was photographing the Americans and the Libyans is that Tim would photograph them from perspectives that you wouldn't normally see in war photography. For example, one of the series of photographs that he has of the American soldiers was one when they were all asleep, when the guards were on duty and the rest of the soldiers were asleep. and. You see the soldiers as weak. You see them as human. The same way that he took the photographs of the soldiers and the rebels in Libya and highlighted them as human. He highlights our own soldiers as human. And it's important to remember that you aren't immune when you go to war. That it can hurt you in more ways. That there isn't a specific personality for a soldier. We're all human. And the last thing I want to highlight is probably the one story in the film that stood out for the most for me. Tim and one of his other partners were in Libya, they were among the rebels, and it was after a time of heavy fighting and they were treating their wounded. And the leader of the rebels, I can't remember his name, was convinced that one of the only medics was a spy. And he brought him out and he was threatening him and it looked like he was going to kill him. And Tim's partner, can't remember his name, sorry, I thought to himself, he said in the film, that he was prepared for another execution and he had seen these numerous of times. So he got out his camera and he went for a wide shot. And in that moment, Tim walked up, grabbed the gun hand of the rebel leader and talked him down, said, no, this is one of the only medics you have. If you kill him, you won't be able to treat your soldiers. He walked right into the line of fire and he did this. The rebel leader stood down and the medic was soon back treating the soldiers. And what this highlighted for me is that Tim was one in a minion who, although a photographer, although a non-combatant, although not even one of the rebels, he still walked in. He took a chance when he could have died. And his partner, the other photographer, through no fault of his own, did so much of what we do. We stand back. We go for the wide-angled shot. We try to see everything in a big picture. And we end up missing it all, not taking a chance, and failing to fully understand what is happening. And I think that's the most important thing that I got from this film. And the title kind of sums it up. Which way is the front line from here? In that, where is the front line? From where we're standing, is there one? Or isn't there? You'll see me next week, and don't forget to be awesome.